Hello everyone, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today I am going to share a depth first search and breadth first search, which are basically a searching mechanism with graph. We will also discuss the graph traversal and what are the difference between depth first search and breadth first search. This is the continuation part of the C sharp data structure series. So let's move ahead without wasting time. So so far in the course. Uh, we have already discussed the graph, its application, its presentation in memory, what are nodes, edges, graphs, and undirected and directed graphs. So today we will discuss traversal with depth first search and breadth first search. Let's go ahead without wasting time. So I strongly recommend you to watch all previous videos which I have already shared on matrix presentation, non-zero index space, and the generic graph implementation. In the previous part, I have explained what generic graph is and how you can implement the representation of graph that we discussed in the previous session. We can see this is a graph node which contains its internal variable, constructor, need only properties and basic operation and the graph was representing the complete graph. And what we are going to discuss today, this section which is graph search the path between nodes. Okay. So what we are going to use actually a bit more information I would like to share with you before jump into the visual studio using linked list in a dictionary to find the path from one node to another in the graph. This is what we are going to do how to avoid getting caught in the cycle in the graph. It means the same node if it is coming again while we are traversing whole graph and understanding difference between depth first search and breadth first search. Okay. So I strongly believe in a practical example. So let me jump into the Visual Studio to demonstrate how we are going to implement this thing today. This is the graph that we are using in this example. You can see this is a node 4. There are 11, 42, 5, 12, 10, 7 and 1. So this is a graph that we are going to use uh, for our searching breadth first search or depth first search. Okay. And the path that we are going to use is 4 to 1. I mean how we can reach and what will be the result if we are using depth first search and what will be the result if we are using depth first search. Now we are in Visual Studio as you can see this is the same solution that I was using throughout my course for the, for the C sharp graph data structure. This solution is ASP.NET Core solution and it is a M ASP.NET Core empty uh, web application through which I implemented all the graph examples and in our previous part we have already discussed how we can implement the generic graph but today we will specifically discuss this section search in graph okay so before calling uh, the search mechanism the search method that we have implemented let me go through you the piece of code which is working for the searching okay just to save time i have already implemented this one and i will demonstrate line by line okay so this is our search method which is actually taking four parameters first node value which will be our start node from where we want to start and this is the finish node value this is the end node and we want to find the path between start and finish node okay and we are also passing the complete graph in this method so, do, so that we can traverse every node and we are also passing the search type means what type of search you want to perform either depth first search or breadth first search okay next we are creating a linked list of graph node type okay this is very important this will be our search list where we will be holding all the element that we are traversing within the graph okay so in the instance we are creating and it is of graph node type okay it means this linked list can contain all the graph nodes in it okay now there are some basic checks if start is equal to finish so we are returning the start node okay with a string because we want to pass and that will be of string type actually that we want to render onto the response to the user for this example that i'm going to use and this is the second case we are finding the start node value within the graph if it is if it is null or if the end node is null in that case we are not returning any path we are simply returning the blank okay and if these two are not the cases then we will move to the else part where we are basically performing the core part of this search method okay 
now here we are creating a start node and how we are creating the start node in graph we are finding the start node value and then we are saying this is our start node the graph find method which is actually returning the graph node that I have already discussed in my previous session I strongly recommend you to watch that before proceeding okay now we are creating the dictionary which will be actually containing the information of our graph node and the path info okay I believe you have some background of dictionary dictionary works on the basis of key and value pair okay or you can say it's a collection of key and values so here what is our key our graph node of integer type will be our key and the path node info will be the value now you must be thinking what is path node info so it is a small class let me select this one and hit F12 so you can see this is my path node info class and it is again of generic type we are not specifying what type it is okay it will be decided at runtime but for this example we are using the integer type okay now we are creating a one constructor in that what we are simply doing we are assigning the value of previous node which is coming for this path node info and we are assigning this value to its previous okay and then this class again contain a previous property which is actually doing nothing and returning this previous graph node type okay that's the only work and you must be thinking why we are using this so this is actually we are using to track the previous node means if you are in the graph and if you are traversing node by node first node then fetching all its children then you are in children then further fetching all the nodes so we want to track the previous node okay from which path we are covering from which path uh, going through we reach to the end so that's why we are using this path node info okay let me go back there control minus one more time okay so here we are now we know what what the path node info role is okay now here you can see we are using the path node dictionary and in dictionary in the very first time we have already created the start node which is our after getting our start node value and initially the path node info initially we are passing null because it is just a start and we are considering there is no uh, node available before this and if it is there we can pass that as well okay we have already seen the structure of our graph okay then how it is so in the dictionary very first time what we are assigning the start node and then we are passing the path node info which will be initially null because there is no node before for search list is nothing it is a linked list of graph nodes and initially we add one value which is a start node okay now our search list has one value and we are checking count greater than zero yes it will be greater than zero because there is one start node and after moving within the while loop what we are doing we are simply creating graph node that we call current node on which we are performing the operation and we are also fetching the first value from the search list which is a linked list of graph node so now my current node is the one that we have earlier set as a first node or you can say the start node okay now we are removing this node from the search list okay because this is the very first one and at this point of moment search list contains nothing it is blank okay now in the next line you can see we are applying the for each loop for all the neighbors of the current node neighbors okay because we want to find out if there is any neighbor that contains the same value as a finish node because that's the actual thing that we want to perform so we are checking if neighbor dot value equal to finish if yes then we can easily print the path and we can convert the path to a string method in which we are passing the neighbor and path node don't worry we will discuss the definition of this convert path to a string but for now it is it will simply return the path between start and end okay and if this is the case and if this is not the case we are checking the path node which is actually our dictionary that is already contained this neighbor and if it is there it means we want to avoid this case because we have already gone through that node okay we need to move further so for that we will continue from here and we are avoiding to stuck in the loop or you can say in the cycle okay and there is a third case if these two are not the cases it means node is not found and node is not in the 
node is uh, available in the dictionary we have already discussed this one and the third one is in that case we need to hold the information of all the child of the particular node okay so what we are doing in the path node which is actually our dictionary we are adding the neighbor and we are also providing the path node info means from which node uh, we move to this neighbor so we are holding that information as well in the path node info as I said, it, is, it will be used for tracking the previous information, previous node information. And this is the very, very important point. Okay. So we are saying if we are using depth first search, okay, please pay your attention. If we are using depth first search, so in the search list, which is actually our link list, in that case, what we will do, we will add the neighbor value from the first, okay, from the front, you can say. In else case, if we are using breadth first search, we are adding the nodes from the last or you can say from rear. Okay. These two words related to linked list. Okay. So that's the only difference. Don't worry if it is not clear at this point of moment, I will further explain with the pictorial representation. Okay. But from the coding point of view, these four lines are the very, very important. Okay. And after this, we are saying we have just added the neighbor value i mean what node we are traversing to the search list okay and after traversing the whole for each loop and if we came out from the while loop and nothing is found in that case we return blank it means we haven't now not found anything and whenever we will get the final value then we will return from here with convert path to a string okay now let's move inside what we are passing here neighbor neighbor is nothing which is a graph node okay and the path node which is our dictionary okay let's move inside in this function what i what i have written over there so this is actually turning a string which will which we want to render to the response so we are passing the end node okay the last node if we if we got the success if we got the end node it means there is a path between start to end so this is our end node this is the complete dictionary that contains all the information of the node that we have traversed within the graph. So what name we are giving here is path nodes. Okay. Again, here we are creating the link list so we can fetch out all the nodes which are available in the dictionary. Okay. So you can see here in the path, we are very first time what we are adding the end node because this is the final result. Okay. In this link list. Okay, so we are adding at the first position. Then in the graph node of previous, this variable, what it contains, the path node, which is our dictionary, and we are path passing the end node and calling its previous. Previous is nothing but the path node info type. Okay, remember we create path node info especially to track the previous node from where we came to the current node. Okay, now again we apply the loop on the previous node and after adding this previous node into the path, we are again passing the previous value in the path node dictionary. Okay. If previous is previous is not null, what actually previous is previous is nothing. We are every time we are going to the dictionary, passing the node and fetching is previous neighbor value that is actually at runtime, it will be updating and updating so that we can find out all the neighbors of each node. Okay. That's how it is. And further, this is a very simple thing. We are creating a string builder and we are creating link list node. Okay. So link list node is nothing. If I click over here and if I hit F12, so you can see this link list node is already available in generic collections. Okay. So we are creating the link list node and it will be of type graph node. So we are calling it current node. Okay. So what we are storing in this current node variable, we are storing the path dot first. Okay. What is path? Path is our link list and the first item is the one that we have added very first time, which is the end node. Okay. And we are specifying the one integer variable, which is of node count. And what we are doing, the current node, it means it is the first node, node count plus plus. Okay. And path string we are appending the current node value dot value it means whatever the value of that node that will be appended in this string variable and we are checking if the node count is less than equal to path dot count till that point 
we will append all the details okay and every time current node will be updated by current node dot next next will return the next node of the linked list okay and at the end we are returning the path string dot to string so that's how it is working so now it's time to see all these things in practical so let's go to the startup class when we have already discussed only this section was the unexplained last time so if we if i directly go here and i mean before this you can see this is very simple thing we are building the graph we are just writing to the uh, response it is a bi-directional one it is an adjacency list implementation i will also show you on the screen and then further what we are saying we are saying type the source node from list it means we need to select at least one start point which is four okay and then we are saying that select the destination node which we are assigning to one okay and then we are selecting dfs or bfs you want to perform for now we are ex selecting the dfs or bfs so now it is breadth first search it is an enum okay and then further we are just displaying to the message on the screen okay we have selected bfs and we are checking the node and then passing the destination information and then search from this part to this path i mean what will be the you know how it looks the ui po point of view okay and at the end we are calling the graph dot search in which we are passing source destination complete graph and search type okay so let me save all changes and let me run the solution here we go now you can see this is the uh, prior implementation this is the adjacency list implementation and you can see here node is selected okay and uh, we have selected the breadth for search okay and the path from 4 to 11 so what node we traverse through 11 42 5 7 10 12 and what is the actual path 4 11 5 1 don't worry if it is still not clear I will show you in one more way so the final path is 4 11 5 1 let me show you the visual presentation of this so in this screen as you can see this was a graph on which we were implementing the breadth first search implementation we start from node 4 and now you must be thinking what the coloring depicting here so we go level by level the meaning of level is after 4 we will be searching the next level of nodes which are 42 and 11 and the next level is 12 5 7 and 10 this is for example if we consider 4 a level 0 so on level 1 nodes we have 11 and 42 on level 2 nodes we have 12 5 7 and 10 and on level 3 we have finally got the 1 which is the actual result okay so we want to reach from 4 to 1 so how it will be represented through memory if we use the add last so we will add the 4 okay on this position which is the 4 and we are calling the add last so after 4 we are traversing 11 and 42 so we will mention 11 and 42 here then after 11 42 what is the node available to us from the last 42 then from 42 we will see what are the nodes 12 and 5 and for 11 it is 10 and 7 so after 42 we have 10 7 5 and 12 then after this level through our program it will check what are the further further what are the further nodes available so 12 there is no further node 7 there is no further node 10 there is no further node but when it will reach to 5 so it will receive the 1 so that the result will be 4 11 5 1 so if i show you in this way so we search the breadth first search okay 11 42 5 7 so 4 11 5 1 4 11 5 1 this is the actual result okay so in the similar way we can also perform the depth first search let me go to the solution to change little bit to show you how we can perform the depth first search this is our solution okay so we are setting here the breadth first search let me stop the solution and if i make it depth first search save changes and run the solution once again this time result will be different and i will show you and i will also show you why result is different so as you can see on the screen it is a bi-directional the same values but here are the changes now we are performing the depth first search searching node from 4 to 1 so if you go 4 to 1 if you remember for 4 to 1 we are calling the add first not the add last okay you can go through the code 
again and again and I strongly recommend you to take the repo on your machine and do as much as experiment you can perform n number of operations over there and numbers of search over there okay so what will happen if we go from 4 it will search for 11 and 42 and if we go then it goes to a further 5 12 so what will be the result 4 42 5 and 1 now you must be thinking how and let me show you again the visual representation of this so now you can see on this screen again the depth first search says it select the nodes and go to the depth to find the element so this is a little expensive when you select the wrong node and go to the deeper level 4 is the node then further we have 42 and 11 okay so we are calling the add first so very first time we add 4 then we have added 11 and 42 so we have 11 and 42 in the list of linked list okay then 11 40 so 42 is the last where we have then 42 further there are 12 and 5 so 12 and 5 we can see these are the further nodes in the memory and if we go further deeper there is no further node for 12 so it will skip this one it will go to 5 and it will check okay yeah there is a 1 so that's the actual result so our final result will be from 4 to 1 4 42 5 and 1 so this will be the result from depth first search point of view okay so how it looks like so you can see on this screen that's what we have performed 4 42 5 and 1 and this will be the normal adjacency list I hope I tried to make it clear for you and there are significant difference between depth first search and breadth first search and the important rule of linked list I believe you have already understand so depth first search says go deeply into the graph as far as possible that's why we call it depth first search and if node not found then go back and search another path and we go to the node in its children and go to node and children this is how it works in depth first search and putting the node onto the front in the search list okay remember we call add first of the linked list method okay so depth first search can be harmful or if we are using the complex graph so for the bigger graph because if you choose the wrong node or the wrong uh, path and you will go deeply and that will be not that will not provide the optimum result and if we talk about the breadth first search we find the node add the children uh, to the back of the search list means from last okay and next we find all the children's and we are not going deeper for a individual path but we go level by level okay we have discussed what type of level uh, i was talking about and we go level by level and that's the advantage of using breadth first search and breadth first search is guaranteed to find the shortest number of edges you cross to get to the finish node that's the actual advantage of breadth first search and the very important point is i have taken the reference from uh, this uh, coursera uh, lecture and the, this link is also given in the description of this video and let me go back to the solution once again i hope you like this video if you have any comment any suggestion so don't forget to provide your feedback in the comment box i will try to reply on that as soon as possible your feedback is the only inspiration for me to create such videos and I will see you in the next video where we will be discussing the minimum spanning tree in graph. Okay. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Till then. Bye-bye.